I'll tell you a big name who's now out of football, at least for the time being. Cherry Henry has stepped down from his role as head coach of the French under-21 side. The French Football Federation announced Henri's decision yesterday, saying he had left for personal reasons. Wonder what is next for Monsieur Henri? Julien Laurent, our French football expert, expert on many things, not just French, joins us live uh, this lunchtime. Bon appétit, uh, Monsieur Laurent. What what has happened with uh, Thierry Henri? Hello, boys. Uh, it's, um, it was a bit of a surprise, to be fair. After the Olympics, where his team won uh, silver medal, as you remember, they lost in the final to Spain. It was not very clear about his future. Didn't really want to answer our questions and everything. But he still had a year left on his contract until next summer. And next summer, there's also the under-21s uh, European Championship, uh, which France have qualified already for. So we thought he would be looking forward to that, that he would take the team there. Uh, but clearly decided that his time was up. I think there's there was maybe the feeling that it, it was could hardly do better than what we saw at the Olympics where he really had a, a wonderful tournament individually and what he did with the team and his connection with the team. And also maybe it was a very tiring year for him trying to battle in to have to create this team. And maybe he felt it was the right time to step down. He, he's had a, a strange managerial journey this far though. I don't know if you'd agree, Julian. Um, coach of the Arsenal under-19s. Then he joined up as assistant at Belgium. Then Monaco, which didn't last long. Montreal Impact, it lasted a bit longer. He was assistant with Belgium again. And then the French under-21s and the, and the French Olympic team. But it is a real mixed bag, isn't it? Yeah, you're right. I think Monaco was too early for him. He was not ready. He was still thinking like a player, like if he was a player. And I say this a lot, but there were training sessions where he, he would grow frustrated by with the players because they could not do the drill that he wanted. So he would end up saying, OK, give me the ball, I'll show you, which is obviously not the attitude to have when, you've, when you're a manager of a team, like well, of any team, but especially a, a top team in the top league. So Monaco was maybe a bit early. Then I think he, he finally made the switch mentally about not being a player anymore and, and being really a manager. And Montreal was... Okay, in MLS, there was the pandemic, it was there was the bubble, and I think he learned a lot from it. And then I think what he did with this front of the 21 and then the Olympic team was really good for him individually, the way he progressed, but also for his name and, and as a as a as a manager managerial candidate for, for bigger clubs and bigger posts, bigger jobs in the future, because I think that really gave him far more credibility than anything he did before as a head coach. I just wonder if it wouldn't have been different if they'd won gold. Would he, would he have hung on? I mean, he was under contract with the Federation mm. until June 2025. I don't know. I think I think he probably would have been the same the same outcome, Jim, simply because I think he would have felt like nothing can beat this. It was an incredible journey and adventure for him and the boys and all his staff. They, they, they really had something quite special. I think they stayed together for more than two months between the, the preparation for the Olympics and then the whole two weeks, a, a bit more of the Olympics. So... I think gold or silver, it felt like he just he, he just felt this was the pinnacle of what he could have done with that team, and now he could move on to something else. Simon, when he played, I mean, obviously the top club vied for Thierry Henry's signature. Do you think top clubs vie for Thierry Henry, the head coach's signature? Um, well, clearly not, because he's not been in a position where he's had the opportunity. He's had the opportunity at Monaco, which he didn't turn into any particular success, did he? I mean, you get a 20% win record, you're not doing particularly well, are you? Um, and we can create a narrative, as some chairman believe, that results don't count for anything, so they shouldn't be considered when you employ people. But as I, the fact he was a top footballer is relatively incidental. Um, it should be, as he a, can he have the capability to manage uh, and communicate in such a way? Uh, and that will only be determined by how he interviews. Um, I think this, we've seen little evidence um, from what he's done um, that illustrates to me that there's a top manager in the waiting there. He's 47 years of age. If he was going to be a top manager, he'd have been one by now. Do you agree with that, Julian? I think that's a bit harsh, maybe, from sight, simply because I think, yeah, more, as we said, Monaco far too early, Montreal, pandemic and the bubble, and MLS not being a, a top league, obviously, yes. But what he did for the last year with, with and I know it's only France under 21 and France Olympic team, but the identity that he tried to implement the team, the relationship, the man management he had with his players was really impressive at times. I have to say, I, I was a bit sceptical, first of all, and the Federation wanted a name. And that's why he was 
chosen. It was a time where he came after some guy who had great generation and never won anything. And they wanted a big name and they got it. He was the star of that team. But you say it was and, early for him at Monaco. He was 41 years of age. You've got Alonso in at Bayer Leverkusen. You've got the fellow in at Brighton. I mean, how old or how young have you got to be to stop thinking like a player and start thinking like an adult? I guess it depends a lot when you finish your career too, Simon. And he, he, he hadn't finished not, not long before that. So maybe that process of when you really believe you've stopped being a player, regardless how good you were or not, and then becoming a manager, it's, this is part of your journey. Julian, and they, he finished four or five years earlier. You're making excuses because he's French. No, no, because he had to do his badge inside. So that took two years to start with. You just don't go straight from being a player to a coach. You have to do your badges. Otherwise, no, of course, and a lot of people do their coaches, do their badges whilst they're playing so they don't have to have the delay. True, true but it's, it takes a lot of time to especially... Face the, the facts, he's not capable of being a top flight manager. I think it's too early to say. Even okay. at 40. So what, when he's about 60, you think? That'd be about right? <laughs> no, no, no. 47 is, a. I think, is a good age. Now I expect him to get offers and to get clubs coming now after what he did with for the last year with France. And I, and I think he'd be ready, far more ready than he was at Monaco. So you seriously Monaco. expect, Julian, and I like you, and I think you're a brilliant journalist, you, you, you seriously expect that there's going to be some significant clubs that are going to look at six games in charge of the under twenty one. Give it to him, Julian. And 11 games in charge of the Olympic side and say, I, that's the fella for me. I'm going to put all my eggs in that particular basket. 100%. Okay. There's, there's, there's clubs done. looking at Wayne Rooney. Why is Wayne Rooney better than Thierry Henry right now? Well, he's not. Nothing gives me that Wayne Rooney is better. Well, Wayne Rooney will be the poster boy for not doing Thierry Henry. But Thierry Henry has achieved more in the game than Wayne Rooney already as a manager. Oh, you're missing his... my point. Wayne Rooney will be the poster boy for not employing Thierry Henry because Wayne Rooney's been given a job because he's Wayne Rooney. And now what we're arguing for is Thierry Henry to be given a job because he's Thierry Henry. <laughs> But I mean, De La Fuente won the Olympic Games with Spain, then got the Spain job. Thierry Henry lost narrowly in the final of the Olympic Games. Why wouldn't he get a good job? Well, see, that's a good point that Julian makes. Look at it from an England because perspective. He's had to, because he's it, had club it, jobs. It, you coach under 21s, you end up with a senior team like Southgate, like Carsley yeah. on an interim basis. Oh, so he might. So I mean, I can make a case for managing the French because I could care less about the French national side. That was but, nice for him, Julian. But the, but the domestic game, he's had two tilts at it. He's had a tilt in the French league, got a 20% win record. He's had a tilt in the MLS, and we can all create a narrative as to the reasons why he only got a 30% win record. But those are the credentials that you look at. The strong at all of it is you're not having Thierry Henry, the head coach or I, manager, anytime no, soon. I've seen no evidence. Yeah. I, I, I see no evidence as a 47-year-old man that's been quite prepared to sit, sit in as assistant roles. And maybe this evidence will come to the fore yeah. because he'll have learned something from, from the failures of Belgium. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.